my name is Steve Maxwell. I've been involved with uh, strength and conditioning and uh, martial arts sports for over a half century. I tried uh, kickboxing and karate and kung fu and a lot of the typical striking arts, but uh, quickly found out I wasn't that good at those particular things. And then uh, I discovered the Gracies about 1988 and immediately said, hey, this is it. I could immediately see how I could use my, my wrestling skills. And uh, it was basically a love affair for a sight. And been with, uh, with uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu ever since. I started life as a uh, school teacher and uh, then later got into the fitness industry and uh, opened up my own gym in 1990 and it was called Maxercise. It gave me the luxury of being able to do jiu-jitsu whenever I wanted. In those early days, uh, just being a blue belt, I wasn't really qualified to teach or anything. So I would go out to California to the Gracie Academy. All the brothers were together, Hickson, Holker, uh, Hoyler, Helson, everybody was pretty much one big happy family. So I had my initial lessons in Torrance, California at the newly formed Gracie Academy, and it was fantastic. I mean, I, being so new, I didn't even realize just the high level of instruction I was receiving. My own physical training uh, consists of a lot of mobility work. I have a uh, subset of strength called mobility conditioning, so I do a lot of that. Uh, I try to get some of that mobility conditioning in almost every day. Uh, I do one uh, dedicated strength workout a week uh, using a um, slow rep speed, high intensity. Um, one thing that does happen is as you reach middle age and beyond, you, your muscles begin to disappear. You start to lose muscle mass. So I, I try to do a little bit of hypertrophy training so to, to slow that down. Uh, but for the most part, it's the mobility conditioning that keeps me really young, keeps me spry, keeps me mobile, keeps me really strong. You don't see too many guys over their mid-40s doing jiu-jitsu anymore. Most guys, they quit. They just give up. They just kind of lose their dream. You know, they get married, they have the kids, the career, and then they forget about their health and their well-being. And they just got really caught up in this drive for materialism. Uh, I see it all the time. People that work jobs that they hate, to buy things they don't need, and then worry about keeping those things that they don't need and making enough money to, to keep everything going. Is it like this vicious cycle? Uh, I recommend that you find a sport like jiu-jitsu and you stick with it for a lifetime. Keep, keeping your life playful and making plenty of time to, to recreate and not just get so caught up in just making money, making money all the time. I mean, sure, we all need money to live, but some people, that's, that's their main drive. And sitting behind a desk all day, man, that's, that's death. You're already dead. So I guess if there is a secret to youth, it's play. Uh, after running my academy for uh, almost 17 years, uh, my uh, ex-wife and I uh, decided to call it quits, and uh, I took it to the road. I realized that uh, information is priceless. People value information, and it's worth something. So uh, I started going on the seminar circuit, so to speak. I found uh, people wanted to host me, uh, wanted to come in and show what I knew, not just about jujitsu, but strength and conditioning and so forth. So uh, since about 2006, I've been constantly on the road. I travel full time. And now I basically go a uh, different country every few weeks or so. I'm, I'm basically a minimalist by nature. I have no home, no house, no car, no apartment. Everything I own fits in one 65 liter bag. And I have a rule, if I buy something new, I gotta get rid of something old. It's a nice way to live. And uh, you might call me a modern day nomad basically roaming the country, uh, the countries uh, worldwide and uh, I really uh, dig that kind of lifestyle.